I will take the next 15 minutes or so to really um, address three, three aspects of this topic. First, um, how do tiered networks and our member-facing uh, efforts fit into a portfolio of strategies uh, to uh, manage both quality and affordability um, in our market? Second, uh, to give you an overview of the ways that we um, guide our thinking about which measures are ready for use in, in prime time, high stakes ways, uh, like tiered networks, but also um, other, other accountability uses, including our provider facing programs. And then finally, uh, give you an overview of the way our tiered products have been designed and a little bit about uh, what impact we've seen to this point. Uh, if someone could advance to the next slide for me, um, uh, you should be looking at a, a picture that, that shows um, aligning provider and member incentives to make quality health care affordable. Um, and so this is uh, really illustrating that in our view, um, there are three broad and interconnected pieces that we have to employ in order to both manage to a lower trend but also uh, uh, achieve the, the twin goals that we have of improving quality and outcomes while at the same time reducing medical spending growth. Um, we rely very heavily on provider engagement um, and as many of you, if not all of you probably know, have, have led uh, the country in, in a global budget-based model that we introduced uh, in 2009 um, that now accounts for close to 90% of our provider network. That has done an enormous amount to align incentives on our provider side around uh, generating better quality and outcomes while at the same time reducing medical spending growth. Uh, but it really tees up the importance of the member uh, side of, of those incentives. Um, and in particular, uh, tools for members and uh, product designs for members that will create incentives to be constant cost conscious in how they choose care settings um, and also uh, to incentivize uh, adherence to uh, medical treatments. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, a whole uh, range of strategies that we use in that product design, uh, but we'll focus on our tiered networks today. And then of course, um, not to be overlooked, is the third important strategy which involves um, ongoingly uh, attending to our own administrative expense and, and keeping that um, extremely low uh, and, and uh, affordable for our members so that we're, we're never um, having uh, the administrative part exceed um, 10 cents on the dollar and, and uh, it's below that for our members now and has been for, for several years. So moving to the next slide. Uh, here, uh, what I'm illustrating for you is a framework that we use to guide our thinking about where the member-facing strategies for improving quality and outcomes and affordability fit in with our provider-facing strategies. And essentially, um, we consider that there are four broad ways that we as a health plan can use data, information, incentives, um, and reporting to try to improve quality and outcomes. The first of those is uh, pictured by the yellow circle at the top, and that is simply reporting performance results to providers in our network with a relevant benchmark to try to motivate their attention to, to certain aspects of performance and their improvement. We can then attach financial incentives to those measures as we do in pay for performance uh, programs, and that's pictured uh, in the next circle to the right. And then we move to the member-facing uh, incentives, including transparency or public reporting, where we attach reputations uh, to the results of those measures. Um, and finally, to where we attach market share to the results of those measures uh, through tiered product design or uh, limited network design, where the measures and results on those measures are used to determine member cost sharing. So you'll notice on the outside of, of those interlocking circles are uh, red um, arrows that heat up as they go around, which really depicts um, from the provider's perspective that these initiatives become higher and higher stakes as you move uh, clockwise around this ring. Um, and 
So the, the, all, the three that I named um, after reporting are all strategies that we regard as accountability uses of measures or high stakes uses of measures. And uh, the next slide illustrates for you that uh, starting in January 2007, we have held ourselves to a set of criteria and principles um, that determine when a measure is ready to be used in any of those high stakes ways. So ready to have financial incentives attached to it for our providers, ready for public reporting, ready for tiered or select networks. And um, while I won't take the time uh, during this talk to go through in detail uh, what's reflected on, on this page of principles, you have it to take away. What I'll highlight for you is that it really represents a blend of what we consider to be the art and science of good performance measurement. Um, the, the science part reflected in a number of the features here that really point to important psychometric and statistical aspects of measures. Uh, the previous two speakers spoke a little bit about the importance of sample size. Um, and we pay enormous attention uh, to whether for each individual measure we have uh, adequate sample size to get a stable, reliable piece of information about a provider's performance on that measure. And if we don't, we won't use the measure in the initiative, whether it's a pay for performance, public reporting, tiered, tiered network. And as you'll see, uh, as we get a little further um, into the slides, in the case of our tiered network design, uh, we have a way of, of addressing uh, tier placement for providers on whom we simply don't have enough information on any of the measures. Um, but uh, some of what's reflected on this uh, page also um, isn't so statistical or, or scientific, but more the art of using measures in a way that will engage uh, providers. Um, and uh, this is, a, we view as a, a critically important part of um, the success factors of the ways that our measures to this point have been able to drive improvement, uh, both in our provider and our member facing efforts. The next slide um, is a nice way to summarize four different types of strategies through which we can um, design products that incentivize um, various kinds of uh, behaviors on the part of our members uh, to pay attention to cost and quality. Uh, so in the top left uh, is the category that we're uh, spending our time on today, which is network design um, and product designs like tiered products that use cost differentials for the members to try to drive members to use the higher uh, quality, lower cost providers. Uh, but just to highlight the other strategies, uh, there are, of course, the use of um, high deductible plan design, which also in many ways is intended to influence members' choice of providers. Um, but on the right-hand side, uh, the set of strategies that's used uh, less around choice of provider and more around adherence uh, to various kinds of treatment recommendations or uh, to um, the reduction of behavioral risk factors. Um, so a, a good, broad uh, set of strategies is really important to have members really attending to all of these aspects, how much care to receive, where to receive it, and based on what uh, the clinician's recommendations are, incentives to um, adhere uh, to that advice. Um, the next is a screenshot of um, our wellness uh, portal and, and a view of just some of the ways that, that a member in our plan will be able to track uh, progress on, on certain types of um, goals that they may have committed to. Um, and, and this slide really is just a reminder of the importance of member tools as a complement to the incentives that we put in place. One of the important lessons learned for us around the introduction of tiered network products is that um, members really need to have um, education before they start to use that product about how to find the information they need about what providers um, are in the different tiers and what the cost differences will be uh, because 
a member who goes out and uses uh, care before they understand the cost differentials associated with a tiered product design um, can be a, a quite unhappy member if they didn't understand that uh, seeing certain providers comes with a higher price tag than seeing others. Uh, so doing um, proactive member outreach and having really clear uh, tools available for members who are in uh, products that do create these kind of uh, financial incentives uh, around different provider choices is, we have found, extremely important. Uh, on the next slide, uh, I am just showing you how the um, enrollment in our tiered products has grown over time. Um, the blue line shows uh, the growth in our um, traditional options. Um, uh, tiered product design. The red line shows after the introduction of what we call hospital choice um, cost sharing, um, how that has grown. Together, these two products, both of which really use a tiered product design, um, have about 230,000 members today. Um, one thing that, that perhaps is, is worth underscoring is the important difference between a tiered product design and a narrow network design, uh, with narrow networks being um, the kinds of networks that Sanjay and Nate were speaking about, is that in a, a tiered product design, the member has access to the full network. Uh, every provider is in the network uh, for them under their benefits. But the amount that they pay, the cost sharing that they pay differs depending on which provider they choose to see. Um, so just uh, a few uh, last slides to give you an overview of how our, our tiered product actually works. Uh, the next slide, um, which we'll move quickly over, but you can return back to, really is um, what was our vision as we were uh, back in the early 2000s creating a tiered product. And you can see that it was to, to really use data to um, create meaningful financial uh, incentives around um, differences in performance that were uh, meaningful and, and important. Um, the, the next slide gives you a sense of the kinds of measures that are used. These are the, the measures used on the hospital tiering uh, that's in our options product. Um, and what you might notice is that there's a broad set of measures that include both clinical process, uh, meaning was evidence-based care followed, um, clinical outcomes, you can see some of the outcome measures over on the bottom right, um, mostly adverse events uh, in hospitals that we would like to always see low rates on, um, and patient care experiences. Uh, they are reflected on the bottom left um, and captured through HCAP scores for our hospitals. A very similar construct with process outcome and patient experience is what we use um, to tier our primary care physician groups. We have no tiering that we do at the individual physician level because uh, we have found that we simply don't have um, enough data to get a stable or reliable um, piece of information about individual doctor performance. So we tier uh, physician groups and we tier hospitals as institutions. The next slide uh, shows that we have three different levels of tier in our options product. And uh, the most favorable is called enhanced, then standard, then the least favorable tier is called basic. Uh, and every provider in our methodology starts in the middle and either earns their way up to enhanced through having both high quality and low cost, or uh, falls to the basic tier by uh, having either high cost or poor quality. Um, a provider for whom we have inadequate information on either or both uh, will be in the middle tier, the standard tier, unless they do poorly on, on cost or quality, in which case they would drop down uh, to basic. Um, finally, just to share with you what kinds of cost sharing differences um, you might see in, in one of our plans. Um, there are several uh, different cost configurations uh, at this point, but this will give you a sense of it. We have quite uh, substantial cost differentials compared to some tiered products in our market and in others. For example, you can see looking down the column in the PPO product for the inpatient surgery that a member who chooses an enhanced tier hospital for that surgery would be paying $250, while a member who uh, chose a basic 
tier hospital uh, would be choosing uh, would be paying out of pocket a thousand dollars very significant cost differential um, while we we aren't able here to report um, the results because they are under peer review uh, there is a formal evaluation of how the um, the tiered product has worked um, in driving differences in members choice of hospital uh, this has been led by researchers at Harvard Medical School and is under peer review um, and does uh, show a very uh, significant effect in um, the tiered product design in influencing which hospitals uh, members receive non-urgent services. Emergency services, um, uh, the cost differentials do not apply. Uh, so in summary, um, it's our view and our experience that a, a blend of member and provider facing initiatives is extremely valuable to drive the goals of improving quality and outcomes while also um, reducing cost growth and contributing to affordability. Um, tiered product designs, as we've uh, talked about, uh, give members access to the full network, but begin to expose members to uh, the differences in provider cost and quality. Uh, we use a very rigorous um, approach and methodology, and that has really helped us to um, avoid provider backlash against these uh, products. Um, providers may not like uh, the tiered products, though under payment reform, they've actually come to see them as a useful tool to help them steer members to lower cost, higher quality facilities. Um, but even for those providers who don't like the idea of tiered products at all, um, they feel that the methodology that we're using is fair, and we haven't faced any of the criticisms, backlash, or, or legal action that some of our local competitors have seen. Um, since the introduction of the products, you, I shared with you the, the growth that we've seen in membership, and, uh, and I did mention that there's a forthcoming evaluation that will uh, show the, the significant impact uh, that the products seem to have, at least on um, choice of, of hospital for elective procedures. So I'll stop there, and thank you very much for your attention.